So I've got the pin tight in there and the brakes are, or the pads, I'm sorry, are just uh, floating in there and I've still got this protective dust cover that goes over the five millimeter hex head on that guide bolt. And so there my caliper is got new brake pads in it and I want to spread these apart enough to fit over the rotor. Hopefully I have. Now this is probably going to go on pretty snug. Oh, I'm missing a step. We want to deglaze this rotor and uh, for that we'll use Scotch-Brite. Why do we deglaze? Um, you know, these surfaces mate to each other and over time uh, as your pads are wearing down, they're leaving material on the rotor and uh, they put this kind of shiny glaze to it that over time is not the highest friction surface. And of course, friction is what this is all about. Um, brakes turn kinetic energy, uh, which is your, your forward motion. They turn kinetic energy into heat energy and they do that through the magic of friction. And if you don't have real good friction, uh, then you're not converting that kinetic energy into heat energy efficiently uh, and the, that in English means you're not stopping as fast as you can. So uh, we want to take the glaze off of this. I'm going to grab some Scotch-Brite. Okay, brand new Scotch-Brite pad, um, not contaminated with any other oils, greases, lubricants, um, anything. And because we don't want to introduce those to our rotor. And then, oh, I got the wrong glove. All right. I'll just hold this on both sides as evenly as I can. And I'm gonna run this around for quite a long time until I see that the surface is not shiny anymore, but it's uh, taken that shiny glaze off and gotten kind of a dull finish to it. I don't know if this camera is high quality enough to really show much of a difference, but, but your eyes will notice. So as I mentioned, we want to get as much of this fluid, this old fluid, out of there and top it off with fresh fluid. And then as we bleed, we'll be pulling that fresh fluid through the system and flushing the old fluid in the hose, master cylinder, and hose back to the caliper out. Um, so this is a significant volume that we can eliminate from having to, uh, you know, the other thing here is you just simply use less brake fluid, but since I never use what's left over in an open bottle anyways, it, you know, there's going to be discard here anyways, so uh, that isn't really the point. So we want to just draw this out of there, and one of the handy thing to have around, you can get this at uh, CVS or Walgreens, is just a, I don't know, it's a, like a syringe. And uh, you can draw a significant amount, I don't know how many milliliters this is, but a few pumps and you've got that completely drained. So. That's as much as I'll get out of there, but that's quite a bit. So a little bit about brake fluid. Uh, my bike calls for dot four brake fluid. There's dot three, there's dot five. Uh, different levels, uh, different boiling points. Um, you know, just if, if you want to use dot four in a bike that calls for dot three, that's fine, but don't use dot three in a bike that calls for dot four. Uh, that kind of a logic. And here's the key thing, is when you bleed your brakes, start with a brand new sealed bottle of brake fluid. When I, once I crack this, I'm going to use as much as I can on this brake job within the same day or within a couple days of each other. Uh, I'm not going to keep some leftover portion of this on the shelf and come back in two years and use that. Reason for that being is brake fluid uh, 
um, what do they call it? The word I think is hydroscopic. Uh, it will absorb moisture directly from the air over time. And so even if I've got this cap on tight, uh, it's still going to absorb some moisture in it. And over time, that moisture degrades uh, the quality of the brake fluid. It will help raise its boiling point. Uh, because think about it, you've got water vapor in there and you've got high temperatures sometimes uh, within the caliper. If you start to have a boil off, um, that water vapor is a gas and uh, gases are compressible. So that means fading soft brakes. Um, so always a fresh bottle when you're doing uh, brake work for hydraulic brakes. And uh, what else can I say about that? Um, and then also, uh, you know, if you've seen brake fluid that gets too old, it'll uh, crystallize and just turn into, I don't know, imagine like uh, the stuff at the bottom of a jar of honey. It just gets gucky and uh, sticks on to certain parts and your caliper uh, pistons aren't going to flow smoothly. And you get a chunk of that in a small orifice at uh, right at a, a bleeder screw or you know, a banjo bolt, something like that, uh, your brakes could not be there for you when you need them. So um, I don't have to tell motorcyclists how important brakes are. Uh, keep them in good shape. So fresh bottle when you do your hydraulic brakes. So another prudent step in doing this, um, this is something I was going to skip, but given my circumstances, but uh, I don't think I will just for the sake of the video. Um, this is the first brake job I've ever done on this bike and so typically a rotor can last through more than one set of brake pads but as those pads are wearing down so is that rotor or brake disc I should say and um, there is a minimum thickness to these that the manufacturer recommends uh, if that gets too thin then at some point it's possible to max out the um, displacement of the piston in the caliper and you don't want the piston to be displaced so much that the seal is compromised you know the piston comes out of its socket essentially and starts leaking fluid because then you'll have a brake failure and that failure can come from just having a disc that's too thin and then wearing down the pads on another set and just ignoring it so you know if you're diligent and aware of your brake pad thickness in theory, you can go below the recommended thickness uh, from your manufacturer on your disc, but, um, you know, why not play it safe? Um, so, the way to do this is to measure it. And so with a caliper like this, you can simply put this on, and you want to kind of find, there's different points along the way. That as I go further out, um, this disc is a little bit thicker than it is in the middle. Um, it's more thin there, so they don't wear exactly evenly. So find a spot that's kind of the absolute minimum. And uh, so this one measures out at just under two uh, tenths of an inch. I mean, just barely under that. The minimum thickness from the manufacturer is 18 hundred, uh, hundredths or 180 thousandths, so I am above that and uh, can reuse this brake disc at this point. Um, but if I was down to 18 hundredths or less, then, um, sorry, I'm doing this in English measurements too. Uh, they're, I, the millimeters are in the owner's manual for those folks that are on the metric system. Uh, my apologies. Um, if we uh, wanted to go below that, I can, but i got to be really aware then of my brake pad wear. And I'm not going to wear the neck set down to nothing because I've, I've given up a little bit of, uh, um, oh, what do I want to call their uh, distance, or I've given up some thickness to disc wear. Um, and, you know, it, it's the pads, it's the discs, and how that affects the travel of the piston coming out of the caliper uh, that, that really matters. So pay attention to that stuff. But, you know, if you measure it and you're good, you can ride with confidence. Okay, so I've got these pads positioned where they should be. And I want to bring my caliper 
in. This is a sliding pin, so I pulled that just slightly. And I gotta line these pads up right there. They fit in to a carrier. I don't know if you can see right here, but this side of the pad has got to slide right in there, and that all needs to be clean. And so I'm sorry I'm getting my head in the way, but everything should just fit in nice, ride smooth, and uh, we can put our bolts back in. I've been very careful about the lubricant on these to keep it uh, clean. That's the 14 millimeter bolt. And we've got our 12 millimeter. And we'll get these snugged up. Just snugging for now, and then I'll go get my torque spec from the owner's manual make sure I get these torqued properly. Be right back with uh, proper torque. Okay, torque specs. 14 millimeter bolt is 19.5 pound-feet. This is 16.5 pound-feet. So, 16.5. Sixteen and a half. That's a click. And nineteen point five. So we go to twenty, back it off. And there we are. Torqued properly. Okay, I'm gonna top this off with Fresh brake fluid. Now I've got clean fluid to draw through the system. Okay, so I've installed a piece of hose on my bleeder bolt. That hose runs down into a bottle down below. It'll catch all of the old fluid. What I need to do, I'll back this off. Okay, so clean fluid up here. Here's my brake lever and my master cylinder, and I've got this. So first thing I do is pump until I have pressure, and I release that pressure pushing down, and then I tighten the bolt. Then I re-pump, loosen, and let that fluid come through and I keep doing this as I work this fluid through and I gotta keep an eye on here what I do not want to do is draw air into this system so watching that very closely also making sure that I don't spill brake fluid on anything painted Okay, so now my reservoir is nearly empty. There's my fluid. Time to top it off again. And I keep going until I'm confident the fluid that I'm seeing coming out of the rear hose is super clean, fresh 
new fluid. It's already looking better, but I'm probably just going to run maybe three full reservoirs through just to be sure. I make sure that I tighten that banjo, banjo bolt before I let up on the brake lever. Because I don't want to pull air back into the system. And I'll just keep doing this. So one thing I've noticed is I have a little contaminant. Something down in this reservoir, I happened to notice it floating around as I was doing this. I'm going to fish that out of there. Last thing I want is that down in my brake caliper. There. Now you can't see it, but whatever it was, it's not in my brake system anymore. Okay, I've satisfied myself that I've pulled enough of the clean fluid through. Um, you can see the color difference. Here, let me go handheld here. You can see the color difference between what I've pulled out and the fresh that's in there. It's, it's definitely different. And so I will go out and uh, test these brakes. Now, when I first use them, I'm going to take it easy. But here's the other thing got to get this hose off and when I pull this it's going to leak all of this brake fluid there's well, about an inch and a half of it in this tube it's going to leak it all over the nice paint on my caliper so I'm going to wrap this thing with this towel as I pull this out and watch the bottle there we go just try to capture all of that because it's really corrosive to paint I mean it will it's going to eat away paint so just a couple final thoughts here um, when I first go out and use these brakes uh, I'm gonna be you know I'm not gonna rely on them hundred percent right out of the gate uh, I'm going to use them get those brake pads to settle into the newly cleaned up rotor. Uh, remember I deglazed it and um, just take it easy because it's going to take a while for those mating surfaces to fully mate and for 100% of the surface on the new pads to be engaging 100% of the surface of the rotor. Uh, remember that that disc when we measured it was not exactly true. It's worn differently in different places so it's going to take a bit for for those pads to settle in as they say so uh, I'm going to use them for a while and maybe even ride on them a little bit but not to the point where I heat them up and warp the disc and uh, just get those mating surfaces uh, really coming together before I really rely on them and uh, but you know it's a rear brake probably right out of the gate I can lock up the rear brake but that's not the most efficient braking is it um, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, next one that I do will be the front brakes where we use the Mighty Vac vacuum pump to aid in drawing the clean fluid through instead of just pumping on the master cylinder. Um, I think intuitively that probably makes sense to a lot of people, but uh, we'll do the video anyway so you can just see it in action. So thanks for joining me and ride safe.